take your hymn, we'll turn to page 264 at the cross. 264. I'm much happier now that I've gotten to see all of you tonight. I hope that you've had a good week. And as I often say, if you haven't, I hope business picks up from here tonight. Amen. We're grateful to see you in God's house. And I do have a couple announcements that I would like to make. There is the, there is the uh, baby uh, shower going on tomorrow evening. Uh, for Sister Whitney Henson, March the 11th, 6 p.m., Family Life Center, It's a Girl, registered at Amazon. You can also leave your gift in the conference room. Uh, it was the last Sunday or this upcoming Sunday, and so please make note of that. Daylight Savings Time begins this coming weekend, spring ahead one hour. You don't want to be late for church next Sunday. Just think of it. When we leave here tonight, we won't have to wait that long to get back. We'll be able to get here one hour quicker uh, than we normally would, and all God's people said, amen. I'm pretty fired up about it too. All right, I've got, I've got an, uh, an announcement here for the youth retreat, Alone Before God Youth Retreat, uh, 319, that's the date, March the 19th, you'll be leaving from the church at 415. If you want your kids to go, Brother Craig needs to know tonight, uh, you can text him or call him. Here's the bulletin for it that Brother Jesse dropped off, or the flyer that Brother Jesse dropped off, and I'm sure if you have any questions, Brother Craig can answer them. Well, I'm grateful to be here with you tonight I look forward to what the Lord has in store for us tonight in his word to end us together in prayer let's begin the night with praying and asking him to help us this evening father we love you and we thank you that we can be here this evening I thank you for your presence in our lives I thank you for the mercy and the grace that you give us in our times of need I thank you for giving us more than what we need for loving us the way that you do for helping us in every step of life every stage of life I'm thankful for my wife and children, thankful for the day that we had. Thank you for everything accomplished. I'm thankful for the church family that I get to be a part of, the work of grace that you've begun and continued in this place since 1944. We give you the glory and the honor and the majesty for everything that you do here in this place and everything that you've accomplished in and through this people. And Father, tonight we pray as we open your word that you yourself through your word by your spirit would minister to our hearts. May we leave here with our hearts warmed by your word and by the working of your Holy Spirit. As we bring requests before you in prayer very shortly, I pray that you would help each of us pray by your spirit, that you would teach us to pray, that if there's burdens here tonight that people have, that, God, they would unload those burdens on you, cast their care 
upon you because you care for them. If there's a need they have, I pray tonight they'll trust that need into your care, call on you, believe you to answer. Father, I pray if there's someone here tonight that doesn't know you personally and have never been saved, I pray tonight they would call on you, Lord Jesus, to save them uh, and to come into their heart, forgive them of their sin, and give them eternal life. You're able, you're willing, you're waiting for us to come. Come boldly before your throne that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, to ask that you may give and that we may receive. Thank you for being a good father. Thank you for how you care for us individually and personally. I pray that you would strengthen us each tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Eddie. If you will stand, take your hand and turn to page 71. Sweet hour of prayer, 71. say bye-bye sweet hour prayer hello Jesus somebody say amen what a day that will be praise his name 
We're so grateful to see you again tonight. Brother Eddie was so excited about having me preach tonight that he didn't even line up a special. Can you believe that? <laughs> Psalms chapter number 126. Psalms chapter 126. Good to see each of you here tonight. Good to see so many of y'all. Thank you for being here. Grateful that you're here with us in God's house tonight. Psalms 126. Not in sequential order. I'm sure I'll come back here again at some time. Uh, no doubt as we're preaching through the order of Psalms. I believe we're on Psalm 68. And we'll pick back up there soon. Uh, but I want us to look at Psalms chapter 126 tonight. It's a song of degrees. It was a song that would be sung uh, by the children of Israel as they either ascended up to the tabernacle or to the temple to worship. And of course, this psalm would probably be sung as they would ascend up to a rebuilt temple, depending on when this captivity was. Uh, and so we begin reading in verse number one, where the psalmist said, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream." I would like you to underscore the phrase, we were like them that dream. God done something so great, so amazing, so beyond the pale, so beyond human comprehension that they were like them that dream. In other words, is this reality? This is where we were. We were in captivity. We were in bondage. But now we're absolutely liberated. Verse 2 then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. Let me say this, when a lost world recognizes that what God has done in your life is great, then you know God has done something great in your life. And there is something great that God has done in every one of our lives who are saved. And that is that He has received us as His own and that He has given us eternal life. And that is something that should be celebrated. Verse number 3, the psalmist says, The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. How many of you would say this Wednesday night that for all that we're dealing with and for all that we've dealt with in recent days, maybe even in personal life, that you can still say tonight, God hath done great things for us. He has. Verse number four. I love this word again, and I'd love for you to circle the word again. Turn again our captivity. Because what has been done needs to be done. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south... They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I would like you to look with me at the first verse at the phrase, We were like them that dream. I want to speak from that simple phrase, We were like them that dream. God had wrought a great deliverance on Israel's behalf. Once again, Israel was the benefactor of God's ability to do the impossible. How many of you are convinced tonight we serve a God with whom nothing is impossible? There's nothing too hard for the Lord. The psalmist captures the attitude of Israel at this time. They were like them that dream. They were so ecstatic with joy at what God had done. They were like, is this even, have you ever heard someone say, is this even real life? This is so good. This is too good to be true. I don't know about you, but the very thought of us getting to go to heaven because of Christ's finished work almost sounds too good to be true. That we don't have to pay penance, that we don't have to make the way. To hear that God has made the way for you and I to have all our sin forgiven and to receive eternal life almost sounds too good to be true. But the good news is it is true and it is good. Somebody say amen. The Lord had done the improbable on behalf of Israel. They were in captivity. They were in bondage. They were subservient to a ruling Gentile nation. They were away from their homeland. 
They were away from their home city. And one of the minor prophets, they remarked, they had hung their harps on the willows and said that they would not sing the Lord's song in a strange land. But now the Bible says that in a moment, God had turned this thing around. He had set them free. And there is a group that is going back home, depending which captivity that they were set free from. They were going back either under Ezra to rebuild the temple under Nehemiah, to rebuild the wall and to re reestablish the Jewish way of life and it's almost like they're looking at each other saying this is so good can it even be true God has done a great work what do they do the Bible says well they're liberated they're singing they're rejoicing God had done great things for them it serves as a reminder to you and I this March in 2021 that God has done great things for us and that God does great things for us and that God is not done doing great things things for us. The best is yet to come. Business is going to pick up if the Lord is your Lord. Today is not your final day. It might have been a bad day. It might have been a bleak day but because your Savior is in heaven and your Savior is in your heart, mark it down. There's a better day coming. The psalmist said I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. I already know heaven's good. I already know New Jerusalem's good. I already know the presence of the Lord is going to be good. I know what waits on me is good. But I got good news tonight. If I live tomorrow, tomorrow can be good. God's goodness has not been exhausted. He's not done doing great things on our behalf. The beginning of sal salvation is the beginning of God's great works in our life. Look again unto the Lord tonight believing that he's got fresh deliverances and new works of grace to do in your life. Amen. He's done great things for us and he's going to do great things for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8 I'm quoting Paul. He said for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. Big trouble. That we were, pre we were pressed out of measure above strength insomuch that we even despaired of life. We despaired even of life. I'm talking about a man that was burdened down in and under an immense amount of pressure. He said in verse 9, But we have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. Think of that statement. So much pressure, so great was what was taxing him that he despaired even of life. At that time, the resurrection power of Jesus was apparent in the life of Paul. I'm not fixing to get ooky or kooky on you, but I do remind you that the very resurrection power of Jesus resides in every one of us. Paul wrote that I may know him and the power of his resurrection in Philippians chapter number 3. And so Paul says in verse 10, yes, we were pressed beyond measure. Yes, I despaired even of life. I had the sentence of death in myself, but I wasn't trusting in myself, but in God which raiseth the dead. Verse number 10, who delivered us from so great a death. And I love this phrase. And doth deliver. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. And so here was the mindset of Paul. Paul's mindset was, though he was pressed beyond measure, though he had the sentence of death in himself, until the Lord delivered him from this world, he was going to experience the delivering hand of God in his life. He doth deliver. And tonight I want to remind you, God is still delivering on behalf of his children. And you've got a reason to look up and look ahead and look forward. Better days are coming. Somebody say amen. We were like them that dream. Oftentimes pastors get to a stage in their ministry 
and they wonder, have I seen the best God's got to offer? Oh no, honey, you've not seen the best God's got to offer because it's getting better. It's getting sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. It's getting better and better. Every day brings us closer to Jesus than the day before. We're on an upward, we're on an upward track. We're going upward. We're living an ascending life. And so here's what the psalmist said in Psalms 126. When the Lord delivered us, we were like them that dream. We were pinching ourselves, can this be real? This this is so good. God has done great things for us that serves as a simple reminder in our lives that God has done great things, that God is doing great things, and that God will do great things on our behalf. Amen? Verses 1 and 2. Would you make note of this with me tonight? It's the one and simple and only point I have to make. The indescribable joy of God. They were like them that dream because of the indescribable joy of God. Verse number one, the psalmist says, When the Lord turned again our captivity, we were like them that dream. Indescribable joy. He says in verse number two, Then was our mouth filled with what, church? Laughter. Laughter. Our tongues filled with what? Singing. We were like them that dream. Too good to be true. What God has done. Our mouth is filled with laughter. Our tongue is filled with singing. And then they conclude with this statement. Verse 3. The Lord hath done great things for us. Whereof we are what? Tonight the saints of God should not be mad we should not be sad, but we should be glad. Really glad. You say, well, it didn't take Biden but 40 days to get the gas price up a dollar. But you all knew that was coming anyway. You say, it didn't take him but 40 or 50 days to get our southern border at a, at a, at a wreck again. But you knew that was coming. It didn't take him but 50 days to get women, men competing in women's sports, but you knew that was coming. It didn't take him 50 days to get the abortion mills pumping all over the world, but you knew that was coming. God help and pity the Christian that voted for that man. Yeah, hope you're real proud of yourself. See, we're going from glad to mad and sad. But I got my eyes on a bigger house than the White House. And by the way, has someone else been elected to office besides? Well, as far as we know, he is hiding. I think someone's fixing Yeah, you was because you ain't nobody seen him. That's exactly right. It's like, where's Waldo? Where's Biden at? We don't know. All right. But my eyes are not on the White House. My eyes are on the Father's house. Oh, Yes. <laughs> you said, Brother Justin, the spirit of iniquity, the mission of iniquity is working. The spirit of Antichrist is blowing. The, the winds of this world are shifting. Things are changing. Yes, and isn't it exciting that here we are representing the God of the ages and our generation holding high the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, knowing the power that came in on Pentecost is available to you and I, and that God has not said done because he's not said come up hither. We've got a work to do. God is doing a work. Great things he has done. Amen. The indescribable joy of God. We were like them that dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues were filled with singing. They said the Lord had done great things for us wherever, wherever we are glad. I want to say to you tonight, if God don't do another thing for any one of us, Miss Pam, he has done great things for us. You can't go home tonight with a sad report. Saying, well, you know, I was really looking out for God. I tell you what, he's just not come through. If you've got that mindset, I promise you, your timetable's off. Because he never misses an appointment. He never fails to keep a promise. And he's real mindful of his own. Great things, indescribable joy. When you go look at the fruit of the Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit is love. What's the second one? Joy. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my 
Where? Oh, yeah, that'll, that'll play good. I better stop that. The indescribable joy of God. I'll say this to you. They're, they were like them that dreamed. Their mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues were filled with singing. The Lord had done great things for us was their testimony, whereof we are glad they were a glad people. This indescribable joy of God, this singing, this laughter, this dreaming, this wasn't perfunctory. This was genuine praise gener generated from a true deliverance experienced by God's people. I was looking, I got a picture in my office that sits on the second or third shelf of one of the bookcases that sometimes I'll sit on the couch and read. I pile my stuff up over there and I look to my left and I got a picture. Jordan's in that picture and a man named Billy Welsh is in that picture and Billy's a pastor now in Tennessee. We went up and seen him yesterday. It's in the new church that God's called him to. Spent some time with him. But I looked at that picture this week and I can still remember the moving of God the Holy Spirit in that revival meeting in our church. I can still remember riding with my father-in-law a couple of days later, being totally exhausted and, ec and ecstatic. You actually drove me around up here in the Ringgold area. I don't know if you remember this or not because we talked about what God had done. And I was telling you about how God had worked in the meeting. And I can tell you, it had been years I'd been pastoring there, years I'd been pastoring there. And it was the first time where there was really an outward moving of God the Holy Spirit in a real way that was so indescribable, I couldn't put into words. We'd seen people say before that. Obviously, we had plenty of people already starting to come to church before that. We had a meeting that night on Wednesday night when you preached your first message and gave it for a few moments. The house was packed that night. So it wasn't like we hadn't seen people say it. It wasn't like we hadn't seen uh, the Baptist refill. It wasn't like we hadn't seen God do something. But I'm telling you, it was so above the pale. It was so above the norm. It was so outside of what was usual for the meeting at Cloverly Baptist Church, I was like pinching myself, saying, am I getting experience this? Is this really going on where I'm at in the church that I'm in? And I want to tell you something. When you taste that, when you see God do something that you can't plan and you can't perform and you know comes down from another world and you know Jesus passes by and he's still working in the hearts of men, it starts to bring a... It starts to do something inside of you to say, oh my, there's better days for the church of God ahead. There's brighter days for the the church of God ahead. There's power from on high. He's done great things. He's doing great things. He will do great things and you won't have to beg bond still to get people to lift their hands in worship and praise and adoration. Heaven will be so nigh. The king will be so close. The blood will be so sweet. The joy will be so full. We will all be laughing. We will all be singing. We'll all be praising God for what great things he has done. Amen. The indescribable joy of God. You say, you're really convinced that we're going to see stuff like that in our church. Write it down big, plain, and straight. I'm convinced of God. He's got a honey bucket of grace in heaven. He's slowly tilting on this joint. And as he moves it over, it's rolling out. And as it's rolling out, he's getting us all ready for bigger tips. Because if he tips it too quick, you know, when he brought the children of Israel out, he said he was going to be very methodical about how he brought them into Canaan land because if he brought them in too quick, that things would grow up behind them, the beasts would take over. So he was very, he was very deliberate in the way that he led them. He, he, the whole time, he was preparing them for what he had prepared for them. And I, I'm, sorry, I'm telling you... I really believe that God brings indescribable joy to his people and that when he does things beyond the pale, what are you going to do when that person you've been praying for finally comes to faith in Jesus? Well, maybe you'll quit talking about praising the Lord and just praise him. These people, they, wasn't, they didn't have to have Eddie coaching them, sing. They didn't have to have pastor up going, man. And by the way, I love, so I told my wife, she got on to me on Sunday. I said, you know, the only thing I miss, <laughs> y'all going to shoot me. I said, you know, the only thing I miss about the choir? And she's like, what? I said, well, when we had the choir up, I didn't get to hear that whole congregation singing. She said, yeah, but only you and Eddie got blessed by that. 
Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. But it was awesome. This praise was not perfunctory, it was overflowing because God had done something great for them. Folks, we know God's doing something great here. We know God's done something great. Look around. Everything around here screams, y'all serve an able God. Everything from our inception to 19, from 1944 to this present day screams to this congregation. There's a living God in heaven that is alive and able and well and in the business of bringing men and women, boys and girls to himself. And we've got a testament setting around us that God is an able God. And tonight I say to you, there is indescribable joy in the workings of God in the midst of his people. How many of y'all want to see God work? Amen. Folks, I'll tell you this tonight in love. Most reason churches said, the most reason churches said empty is not because they won't change their style of music. It's not because they won't change X, Y, Z on the outside. It's because they have no desire for God to work in their church. And they're not expressing that desire. And God's giving them exactly what they're asking for, a big fat nothing. Because that's what they want. Because if God moves in, a bunch of junk's got to move out. He cramps our style, mine too. Because he don't play second fiddle to nobody. It's his church. Pastors included. It's his church. We just we have to be just, it's his church. He bought and paid for it. And I'm a part of it, not the owner of it. I work for the owner joyously, gladly work for the owner. The indescribable joy. They sat empty. They sat dead because if God's invited in, he brings life and everything life brings with it. And if he brings life, you got to get the nursery ready. You got to buy diapers. You might have to pay for some formula and get clothes and get a room ready. That's why they sit empty because nobody wants to fool with babies. I'm talking about people getting born again people coming to church. Well, people got problems and people got troubles. Yeah, and so do you. Bring it in, bring it on. Somebody got to get help somewhere. Somebody say amen. Here was the one thing God was driving home to me on this text. It was actually driving up the road yesterday, to be honest with you. I was on the phone with my mom. I told her I was going to call her on Monday evening. I messaged her late and said, I'm going to call you tomorrow and we'll, we'll celebrate with you. And so I called her, and we're talking, and I said to her, I said, uh, I said, I said, it's almost like we were like them that dream. And she said, yes, and when, when I said that, I grabbed, I'm driving probably too quick, but I I'm dry, grabbed a cart and I wrote down, we were like them that dream, because the Lord immediately impressed on my heart. Here's a simple thing, Jordan was going through the timeline a month ago, this was the current concern, this was the worry, this was the fear, this was the anxiety. Two weeks ago, this was the worry, this was the fear, this was the anxiety. And then here today... It's a year until she's got to go back to Emory, even see a doctor. And I'm going to tell you something. When you go back to a month ago and you look at the way my parents were behaving and the concern they had, and then you go back two weeks ago and just the surgery day and the days after the surgery, and you look at it today, it's like, my goodness gracious, great things God has done. And I just remind you not we serve a God that doth deliver. All I know is this, is there is indescribable joy when our Heavenly Father works in our lives. He brings joy to our lives. His presence brings joy. I wrote these down. I'll share them with you and then I'm done. Thank you for listening so well. Psalm 1611. The psalmist said, that will show me the path of life. These are verses that have stuck out in my life for years of Christian living and gospel ministry. That will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Every one of you should have Psalm 1611 written down. Now, I believe there's a messianic uh, message in that. It's speaking of Christ at the Father's right hand. But besides that, Miss Rebecca, fullness of joy is found in the presence of God. What I can't find anywhere on this planet, if I will simply go to heaven, I might write a book one day. I got on my knees and prayed and spent an hour and went to heaven and come back. I'm going to write a book about it. Think that'll sell? You know, I died and went to heaven for 30 seconds and you come back and tell us, if you tell me anything you saw that John didn't see, I don't know if I'm going to believe anything you saw. I'm just letting you know in advance. All right? But here's something I think we miss. I said this last Sunday, Wednesday night, I don't know if y'all gasped when I said it or not, but I literally, I believe this, we go to heaven whenever we want. 
when we bow before God, whose presence are we entering in prayer? We're coming boldly to the throne of grace. Our conversation is from heaven. Our life is from above. Our whole life is situate from above. It starts from above and it comes down. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. And I just remind you, the best part of church isn't the preaching, isn't the singing. The best part of church isn't the fellowship and all those things are awesome. But the best part of church is the presence of God in the singing and the presence of God in the preaching and the presence of God in the fellowship. That's what gets people wanting to hang out after service for 30 minutes and 45 minutes and meet with each other outside the church because you want to be around God's people because it's as close as getting to God as we can get till we get to heaven. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. What makes church great? Jesus makes church great. Somebody say amen. He can take second rate preachers, but he's a first rate savior. And so he makes everything good. Somebody say amen. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. This is another one of those indescribable joy verses that have helped me. Nehemiah 8 10. The children of Israel were mourning because of their law breaking. And Nehemiah said, oh, no, 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 no. You got the wrong day. The wall's done. The law is red. This ain't a time for you to mourn. This is a time for you to celebrate. So this is what he said. Go your way. Eat the fat. I don't know if this is best health, best health advice or not. Eat the fat. Drink the sweet. Send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be you sorry. And I believe every single one of you should have this phrase in your minds. For the joy of the Lord is your... See, I knew some of y'all know it. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we were glad glad God's done great things he's doing great things he will do great things we were like them that dream I can't wait till we roll in here one service man we've had some amazing services in the four years that we've been here I've got to participate in many of them here with you all and just revel in God's presence enjoying it but I believe there's going to be tangible things that happen tangible you can put your finger on it not just people getting ministered to in their hearts I hope that's ever ongoing at our church. Our church is a house of prayer. Amen. Amen. It's altars are open. Singing, preaching, altars are open. You say, I don't like that. Well, come to the altar. Then you might like people getting help. You say, well, can't they wait? No, if they need help, I want them to go ahead and get it. That's right. I'm all about people getting help when they come to church. And all God's people said. And so, the joy of the Lord is their strength. Tonight you'll find strength in the joy of the Lord, even when life doesn't bring you joy. John 15, 11, Jesus said this, These things have I spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. John 16, 20, Verily, verily, I say unto you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. He was speaking of his resurrection. Did I tell you Jesus is alive? He rose from the dead. Verse 22, the same chapter, And ye now therefore have sorrow, why? Because he said he's going away. But I'll see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. Can anything separate us from the love of God? Jesus is our joy. And his presence is fullness of joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Can anything separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord? We cannot be separated from our source of joy. No man can take that from us. Like the crazy governor in Michigan, she can't take joy from the Church of Jesus Christ in Michigan. Like uh, Justin Trudeau and whatever policy he has in place that has allowed one of my dear brothers to be imprisoned up there because of having church. You like the way that sounds? It's coming, it's coming. It's coming, it's going to be normal. Normal. And, and, I, and I know people just pick up stuff like that and they just laugh and ballyhoo. Oh, listen to how they're talking. I bet you didn't expect, I bet you didn't expect lockdown 101 last year about this time either, did you? And then you see these daggum states ruining businesses and stuff like they've done through this pandemic. Absolutely indescribable. But you can't rob my brother's joy up there in that prison cell. Who, who knows? He might be up there like Paul and Silas right now in Canada, just clapping his hands, singing, praising God, praying, getting ready for a Holy Ghost revival to happen in Canada, which, by the way, Canada needs somebody to say amen. 
No man shall take it from you. No man can take it from you. John 16, 24, Jesus said, Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Do you notice how now he connects his joy, his presence at the Father's right hand with us being in him and our prayer life with his joy? Indescribable joy. They had indescribable joy. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3, that great that great apostle, that great gospel preaching Peter said these words in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, he believed that salvation come through Christ alone, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. That literally means a living hope by who? The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes, Peter believed and had his faith in a risen Savior. Verse 4, to an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away. Notice where Peter says this inheritance is reserved. Reserved where? In heaven for you. Sounds a lot like what Jesus said in John 14. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So he's went to heaven. He's preparing a place. Our treasure is in heaven. Our, our, our inheritance is reserved in heaven because our inheritance is entitled, our inheritance is tied to the heir of heaven. And the heir of heaven is Jesus Christ. Verse number five, who are kept by the power of God through keeping the law and water baptism. Oh no, dearly beloved. The Bible says in verse five, who are kept by the power of God through what? Faith. That's the same grace and same faith that Paul spoke of. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. That's the last time that Paul spoke of. Wherein verse number 6 the Bible says you greatly what? Rejoice. Though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with the fire not be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The same appearing that Paul spoke of in Colossians chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8 I know you already know it. Whom having not seen that is our Savior we have not seen him. Those to whom Peter was writing had not seen him, whom having not seen you what? Love, in whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Tonight my eyes have not laid hold on the one that saved me as a six-year-old boy, but I can report to you the night, May the 9th, 1989, the Lord began a good work in me, Philippians 1 verse 6, and he is going to perform that good work until the day of Jesus Christ. He is still working on me. He is still working in the midst of his church. We've got every reason tonight to leave this house looking up until Jesus Christ. Listen, here's what I'm praying. Until you come for us, come to us. Until you come for us, come to us. Until you come for us, come to us. Make yourself known to us. Make yourself apparent to us. Let us know you're here with us. Show yourself strong on our behalf. Fight for us. Lead us. In the charge, show us the way. God is doing great things. Amen? Amen. Indescribable joy. I'm sure they were walking, if it was out of Babylon, they were walking out of Babylon, the sights of scenes and sounds of heathenism, all in their past, as they're walking down the road to Jerusalem. And they're looking at each other saying, can you believe this? We're going home. We're going home, isn't this great? Singing, laughter, and the heathen going, man, God's done great things for them. And they say, the Lord's done great things for us, whereof we are glad. They had indescribable joy because of the delivering work of God. On their behalf. Paul says God's delivered. He doth deliver. And he will yet deliver. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm probably going to find myself in more than one fix. And more than one pinch before I get home. And here's what I'm thinking. A 
According to the scripture record, I should be able to anticipate God is going to come through for me in every fix until he fixes me completely and brings me home. And until I'm in his presence at home, I should expect no matter how great the pressure, no matter how great the trial, no matter how weakened I am, that God in heaven, which raiseth the dead, until he takes me out of this world, is going to raise me up and enable me to serve him. You say, why would you say these things on the wings of night? Well, because the devil does land some deadly blows and hurts deeply and scars people. And it's easy to lose hope. Now the God of hope for you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope for the power of the Holy Ghost. But here was a group of people that said, man, God has done something so great, completely improbable and unexpected to us that we're like them that dream. It's just too good to be true. Man, I'm waiting for us to be talking like that around here. Somebody say amen. Let's pray tonight. Father, thank you for these simple truths from your word. Thank you for your grace greater than our sin. Thank you for your great faithfulness. Thank you for your promise to help till you bring us home. I pray tonight that our people that came here looking for help got some help from the singing and the preaching of your word tonight. And now, Father, I pray that you'd use us to intercede on behalf of others. And thank you, God, for the great things that you've done in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Would you look at your bulletin with me, please? Marilyn Brown, if you see things that are recurring, I'd ask you to continue to pray for those matters that are recurring on the prayer bulletin. Marilyn Brown asks us to remember Maddie Harbin. She has breast cancer and had surgery Monday. Also, remember David Bryant, her son-in-law's father. He has a blood clot in his lung. I think you probably heard that one call recently. Uh, Brother Larry Watkins is recovering from surgery. Hopes to be here this Lord's Day. Ask that we continue to pray for uh, him. But the John Kleeman is at home recovering some, from surgery. And he asks that we would pray for him. And then also Miss Jean asks us to continue to pray for her son, Jim Dyer. Uh, Miss Sally Keaton's daughter, Becky Burke, had surgery today and she's recovering. So pray for her. Sister Sheila Pruitt <coughs> will be having knee surgery March the 23rd. And so uh, let's remember her. Brother Ray Hightower is in rehab. Uh, y'all had a safe, smooth trip from all that I got on Monday, getting him down there. He messaged me and let me know y'all were there. And uh, I think we should hold that brother up in prayer. Do you agree? Uh, that God will give him help during his time there. Fred Miller asks that we pray for his son and daughter uh, to get back in church. And see, that's something I've been thanking God for over and over again. How much weight have you gained, Fred? 12 pounds. Down, 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 down. Down, down, down. How many months was it going down? Four months. All I'm hearing is down, down, down. Doctors, what's the problem? We don't know. We don't know. Tests, tests, tests. And what are we saying to the Lord? I'll tell you what I was saying to the Lord. If you don't touch him, if you don't touch his digestive system, if you don't give him an appetite, I don't know, they're trying to get help from doctors. I'm sure they're good doctors, but it's not coming. It ain't coming. We're not getting no answers. So if you want him here, you're going to have to touch him. Man's gave 12 pounds. And I have reason to believe that there's probably more people than just me praying. For I know his name was lifted up in the men's prayer room. And God in heaven's gain. Now, when do you want us to, tell you, when do you want us to ask him to stop giving you weight gain? Well, I was going to ask you what weights you want, and we're going to pray for it tonight, amen. <laughs> oh, my. Yes. I love it. I love it. Let's remember his son, Brother Fred's son and daughter, to get back in church. Does anybody here tonight know somebody that you love that you want to see back in church? Would you raise your hand if you have somebody like that? Could I ask you to bring them to the altar tonight and say, Lord, would you bring this person home? Would you bring them here? Would you bring them to yourself? And that person you're praying for to get saved, would you, when we come to the altar tonight, would you bring those people to the altar and say, God, please, let us see these people saved. 
Angie Watkins asks us to remember her mom. Her surgery was successful. She got to come home today. Her name's Betty Soul, and uh, she had shoulder, shoulder replacement surgery yesterday. I talked with Miss Jean Stevens earlier in this week. She's having some serious health issues and asked that we uh, uh, lift her up before the Lord in prayer. And then Brother Jim Wilson asks us to remember his supervisor's daughter-in-law, Kelly Benson. They found cancer in her lymph nodes and her neck. And so these are specific requests that we've been asked to lift before the Lord tonight. Now here's what I'd like to ask you to do. I would like to ask you to bring those people that you want to see in church to the altar. Those lost people that you want to see saved to the altar. Would you bring your Sunday school teacher to the altar? Pray for your teacher. Pray for our greeters. Pray for our deacons and their families. Pray for me and my family. Pray for this upcoming Lord's Day. Pray that God will be glorified in our church. Pray for our security team, medical team. Pray for our choir. You say, you think we should pray for every bit of this tonight? Yes. Are we going to meet together this Lord's Day? We're going to meet together this Lord's Day if Christ hasn't come for us. And if he has, we're going to have a meeting in the air. And that's going to be a real meeting, somebody say amen. Can I ask you a question? Are you ready to go? If that's the case, are you ready to go? If not, I'd use the altar to get ready to go tonight. If I didn't know the Lord, I'd come and ask Jesus to save me tonight. Wouldn't you? You know, it's like I was talking to Brother Jim. He's talking about the service on Sunday and preaching about being, you know, the grace of the Lord. And I said, I said, I know. I said, sitting on the side that we're on, the grace of God is so good. It's almost like, can we do a repeat of that? How many are with me? Okay, can we hit repeat on being saved? No. No, you don't have to hit repeat because it just gives you more grace. Amen. You begin a life of grace when you come to faith in Jesus Christ. And so tonight, maybe you want to come to the altar. Let's just pray tonight for God to be glorified in our lives, homes, and our church. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Well, let's lift her before the Lord tonight. All that will, would you make your way to the altar? I'd like to have our men get on this side, our ladies get on this side of husbands and wife. I'd like to pray together. Then that's great, but I'd like for us to come to these altars, and I'd like us to truly pray for these needs, and let's pray for our church in all these areas I mentioned to you tonight. Let's lift them before the Lord and pray that God in heaven will be glorified. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, Well, thank you. for. Let's pray for how, Absolutely. Let's remember how and fill us tonight as they leave out this Sunday morning. God, to keep them, watch over them. I noticed you brought your wife with you tonight. It's awesome. I love it. Isn't God wonderful, y'all? I'm so grateful we can get on these altars together as a church family. I'll give you a moment to get where you're going. And uh, I want us to lift our hearts before the Lord. Lift these people before the Lord. God hears us, church. God hears us. Let's be sure to thank him for everything he's done. Let's just tell him, take a moment to tell him we love him tonight and we're thankful for him. Brother Rick Holson, back, lead us in prayer.
Amen. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Yes, He is. He makes everything better. And I praise the Lord that He does. Uh, youth retreat, if you want to go, please remember, uh, 319. Uh, that's March 19th. You'll be leaving, 415 from the church. If you want to go, if you've got kids that are wanting to go, please let Brother Craig know. And I think you'll be carrying them there. And then ladies, tomorrow night, y'all having a... Um, Oh my, baby shower, thank you, that's what I'm looking for, baby shower for Sister Whitney Henson, and they're having a girl, and I know her and Jess are not going to know what in the world to do with a girl in their household, but they've got her coming, and so you're going to have a uh, baby shower tomorrow night for her. What time is that again? Six o'clock, I said that before the service, but you knew I wasn't going to remember that. Let's stand to our feet tonight, A's going to come and lead us in page 370, revive us again, and we're going to leave on that note tonight. Thank you so much for being in your places. And all of you, thank you so much for being in your places. And it's so good to see all of you here tonight. Love you, brother. Daddy, you come. Lead us in the whole song. And uh, that's good, isn't it? We yeah. can sing that whole song, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. We praise thee, O God, for the sun. Oh! 